Welcome back to Freedu Hub. Today, as part of our lab exercises for the course on cloud computing, we learn how can we set up Moodle, which is an open source course management system using XAMPP. Now, XAMPP is a tool that you can install regardless if you are using Mac operating system, Linux, or Windows. You can install XAMPP. It would set up Apache, MariaDB, PHP, and Perl on your system. So you don't need to install those things individually. This is an excellent application to check various different applications on PHP platforms for testing purposes. So I'll take you along uh, what are the different steps required to install it. So uh, in order to set it up, we might need four different tools. First of all, we'll use XAMPP. Then we'll download Moodle, which is the course management system itself. And in order to find the things and modify the PHP files, etc., we'll be using with tools. That's an excellent search utility and we'll be editing the files using note plus plus notepad plus plus because it's really helpful in editing the files so first of all you'll go to zap and you'll click on downloads and you'll download this latest version which is 824 or whatever latest version is available on their website the reason of selecting the latest one is that it would have the updated php version and mysql database versions which would help you in the installation process Second thing is you'll go to Moodle.org and then you'll click on Downloads and here it would show you the latest release of it and in that release you'll go for the stable version of it and you'll download the zip file um, which would be around about 81 MB. Third thing is you'll go with tools. Depends if you're using 32-bit or 64-bit system. You can download the file accordingly. And then you'll be downloading Notepad++, which is 852 at the moment. You can download the latest version whenever you're watching this video and the version which is available over here. Now, this is our Windows 11 on which we'll be setting up um, the XAMPP uh, and we'll be installing Moodle on it. So I have already downloaded the files which are saved on my computer over here. So out of these, I have already installed Notepad++ and search. So if I'll click on this thing, you can see that it really helps me in finding the files by just typing in whatever I am looking for. For example, if I'm looking for text files, it would show me all text files on the PC. Second thing is Notepad++. That's an excellent utility to edit the files. So um, that's Notepad++. I can easily search, find, and replace files on this one. Um, then we'll be installing uh, Visual C++. Um, in most of the cases, you might have it installed on your PC, but if you don't have it, install it first before you'll continue with the installation of rest of the things on your machine. So that's installed as well. Now we'll uh, try to install the latest version of ZAMP and uh, we'll start the installation of it. Now it would ask you that you'll have to enable UAC. You can ignore this one, press OK, press Next and uh, select the things that you need to install in this one. Since I'll not be using FTP server on this one or mail server or Tomcat, I only need Apache and MySQL, so I'll select those things. Um, uh, same thing is I don't need these two things as well. I'm more interested in PHP my admin, which would help me in setting up uh, my uh, database on the uh, server itself. Uh, so all these settings, once they are checked, press next. And uh, it is asking that it is installing in C drive on XAMPP. I would not recommend you to install it at this uh, specific location because on C drive directly, Windows 10 and Windows 11 uh, restrict certain applications to create files directly on the C drive. Since I have only one partition, I'm proceeding with that, but it's highly recommended that you must install it in any other partition other than the C drive. So press next, press next, and next. Now it would take some time to install the things on your machine. In the meantime, we can look at the um, uh, Moodle file and we'll try to open it with uh, WinRAR and uh, it would show us that there are some folders in this one but we want to extract these files in the root folder of XAMPP just like we do it in a web server. So since the installation has started, it might have created a folder of XAMPP on our drive and you can see it over here. So we'll go to that folder 
and then we look for the uh, folder called HD Docs like this one we'll open it and we'll extract the files in this one in this folder so let me arrange the window and then I'll simply drag and drop the files of Moodle in our root directory so that these files will be copied in our um, C root folder in the meantime and this installation is in progress so it would save some time um, it usually takes some time to copy the files and to install XAMPP on your machine so you'll have to wait here for a while till it would complete so we have successfully copied the files on the computer itself and uh, they are over here in the folder called XAMPP As you can see, Moodle folder is here and we have all the required files in this one. Just make sure that you have copied it in the same path and the name of the folder is Moodle as you can see over here. So we'll wait for the installation to finish for XAMPP and then we'll continue with the rest of the setup. Now as you can see, the installation is finished and it's asking you to load the control panel of it but I don't want to do it and I would highly recommend don't try to start the notepad or don't try to start the control panel at this moment of time the reason is that since i have installed it in the c drive and on the root you will find the folder as xamp and there are some uh, restrictions or the admin privileges on this one it would require a administrative access on the folder so in order to do that i'll click start and you can see the shortcut over here you'll right click on this one and run it as administrator if you don't have the password or you're logged into a different account it would ask you for a password but since i'm logged in as the administrator i can directly see this interface now if you want to start your apache and mysql rest of the things are not there since we didn't install it you'll click on start for both of them and it would start the services now if you want to make any changes or if you want to go to the administrative portal of it for apache it would open your favorite browser and uh, it would load the settings on that so you can access it from this one and if you want to manage your mysql server um, you'll click on the button and it would open your php my admin but i'll not recommend you to create a moodle database over here at the moment because i tried it and i ended up having lots of issues so we'll not be doing it like that we'll go um, through the normal process how we run the applications on a php server now once that's done um, what I want to do at the moment is that I'll open my Chrome browser and I'll try to browse to the folder um, which is this one where I have my Moodle files copied in C drive in XAMPP folder hddocs and I'll open Moodle and then I'll find the admin folder in this one and you'll find a file in this one called index.php so Moodle is recommending that if you are having a web-based installation, you must uh, target to the Moodle admin folder to start the installation. So I'll type it over here as localhost. Then I'll type uh, Moodle and then I'll type admin slash enter. And this is the first error message that you'll see over here. Now in order to solve it, as I told you that we might need Notepad++ for that. So in order to locate the file, you'll copy the path of it from here. And then you'll open your um, file which is everything. And you'll try to locate the path of it. So here as you can see, it has identified the path of it. We'll open it. And then we'll try to see that here it's saying that go to line 56 to locate the error so we'll go to line 56 and here as you can see this is the thing which is actually calling for the php version so in order to avoid that we'll uh, command these three lines over here and instead of that uh, we'll uh, put a code over here which would be echo your version and then the is not supported you need 7.2 or later and then save the file I'll uh, give the uh, exact code in the video description as well. Once that's done, 
you can close this application and refresh this page. And as you can see, the error message disappeared. Now we'll press next. And it would ask us for some things. For example, we have copied the folder in CZAM, Moodle, Moodle data. And you can check it over here that if we'll go to the XAMPP folder on our computer in Moodle, rather on HTTP. And if we'll go here, we'll see this Moodle data folder. It is available here. So we have provided the path of it over here, CZAMPP Moodle data. And then we'll press next. Here it would ask you that which database you want to use since we saw it on their website that they are using MariaDB. So we'll select this one and we'll press next. Now here you'll have to provide the details of the database that you want to create on your uh, my uh, SQL database. So uh, we'll keep all the settings as it is. The database user that we are using is root, which is the default setup. But if you want to use any other account, um, you must provide that account and its password over here. Since we are using it on this computer and it's only for testing purposes, our root account is open, which is not recommended that it does not have a password. But for the actual installation, you need to have an account with the password but make sure that any account that you'll choose over here that account must have full admin privileges on the table of Moodle that would be created in your database once that's done we'll press next now that's a basic notice for copyrights etc you can read the details on their website and then press continue Now here it's telling you that there are certain extensions which are missing on your computer which are required for the installation of Moodle on your PC. Now again, uh, we'll use the same tool that I showed you earlier. We'll go to everything and this time we'll search for php.ini. And once we'll uh, find it over here, we'll open this one again with Notepad++. And then we we'll look for the uh, things which is talking about the extensions of uh, PHP to enable certain things on the computer. As you can see, there are lots of extensions over here. So we'll go through one by one. I don't need this one. I'm not enabling FTP, so I'll leave it as it is. I need GD and then I'll enable GMP as well. So you'll just uncomment it from here. I need INTL as well. IMAP is used for email, so I'll not check it. Rest of the things are for Oracle and ODBC. I don't need that. I'll open, uh, use OpenSSL as well. Uh, I'm not using Firebird, so I'll leave it. And I'll enable uh, PGSQL as well. And uh, I'll enable the uh, Shamop as well. And then I'll go down and I'll enable, um, now I'll leave as an MP. I'll enable SOAP and sockets and uh, sodium and sql light and tidy and uh, xs1 and zip and i want to enable zend as well so that's all as far as the settings were concerned now there is another setting which is about uh, something it's saying thousand so we'll try to locate it in our php.ini file and uh, you'll find it over here max import variable so i'll uncomment it and i'll instead of adding 1000 i'll add it 10000 because here on the installation it's saying that it should be at least 5000 so i'm making it 10000 and i'll save the file now once you'll make the changes to your php.ini file you'll have to restart your apache and mysql so you'll click stop and then you'll start it again over here make sure that they are both in green color it means that it's running you'll minimize this thing and uh, you'll go to the installation page and you will reload the page now as you can see that most of the error messages are gone some of them are quite basic now once that's done we'll press continue now you'll have to give it some time just don't rush don't refresh the page otherwise you'll have to start everything from the scratch again 
it loads uh, certain things so it is checking php it's checking your database it's checking all the plugins and extensions so give it some time till it loads and then it would automatically scroll the page and once it would show you continue only then you'll press on the button to go to the next page as you can see finally it has started installing and let it install as you can see it's scrolling the page automatically and new things would be coming here at the end it would show you a button of continue only then click continue to proceed to the next page just give it some time to finish the installation process as you know it's finished and it showed us this button so now we'll click on this one to continue now that's another typical error message that you'll see and just like we solved the problem earlier we'll copy the path from this one and we'll open our everything file and we'll try to search for this file and it showed us that it is in this one and it is line number 146 so we'll go to line number 146 and this is the actual uh, reason why we are having it because it is configuring the uh, lock mappings etc so in order to resolve it we'll go to control f and we'll try to find uh, the class cache configuration and as you can see class cache configuration is here and in order to uh, suppress the error message i'll put an enter anywhere after this protected and i'll uh, paste this uh, message over here private uh, configuration lock mapping is equal to array and then you'll save it i'll copy this code as well in the description of the video so once it's saved now we'll go to our installation again and we'll try to refresh the page and as you can see the error message disappeared from here now we'll proceed with the installation of moodle you'll provide a password which has a special character and a number so once that's done you'll provide an email address for example test at edu uh, test dot uh, test dot com and then the rest of the things are fine i'll press update it would take you to the next page you can call it my first edu site and then you can type in as lms over here you can select the region wherever you are i'll keep it as it is since it's for testing purposes you can type in an email address as support as test.com and i'll just change it to com so that it accepts it and press save So this is your initial interface of uh, Moodle and uh, it's initially showing the calendar over here. If you click on my courses, it would take you to the courses that you have uh, for site administration. You can click on this one and it has lots of different options. Just like any content management system, if you will go to appearance of it, uh, there are themes. You can select the themes. The free themes are available on Moodle website as well. You can download them and simply install on it since i'm logged in as the administrator i'll log out from here and it would show you the first screen of your uh, course management system if you want to log in again press the username as admin and provide the password that you selected earlier and you'll be able to log in to the moodle so that's how we install Moodle using XAMPP, which is a free open source software to run PHP applications. And Moodle is itself an open source program that you can use. Now, since we have set it up the server to configure uh, PHP applications, you can use either Joomla, Drupal, WordPress, or any other PHP open source content management systems as well on Zoom servers. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.